Today, I'm going to be going over how you can create this health bar for your game. So as you can see down the bottom, I have a just an animation playing of the health bar, of kind of how it would look if it was just going down constantly. And then up the top, I have a health bar which is equal to whatever this property is. So I can change this property to whatever I like. And the property is going to be equal, uh, the animation is going to be equal to that. So this allows us to have a, let's say, a hundred health and depending on where you are depending on how much the object has health it will kind of change what state the health bar is in which is really useful for a game uh, now I have the second scene over here and we're just going to go ahead and delete anything that we don't need and then we're going to go ahead and add a plane now this plane is going to be representative of our health bar so we kind of want to scale it up like a health bar would be. And also going to change this to textured. And then we want to go ahead, ahead and hit N. And then go down find shading and change it to GLSL. Alright. And also come up here and change this to Blender Game. Now this is all set up. We can go to the top view. And I am just rotating this around because I figured out it was in the wrong view. Alright. So we're going to come over here to the object data panel and we want to add a shape key so we have this basic basis shape key and what this is is this is a mesh by default what the mesh is just going to look like normally uh, so that is what we have then we're going to add a second key this is where we can deform the mesh and then we can animate this to kind of I believe it's interpolate or I guess you could use the word mix between the animations so as you can see, I just put it at the end. So now, as you can see, we can make it go shorter and or longer, depending on what we have in that uh, that value. So as you can see, we have a problem there. It's because I changed the basis. So you want to make sure you do all your changes to your basis before you do a key, a second key. So you can see it's working now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead to frame 100 and we want to hit I here. Um, now you think I would change this to one, but actually I want to have frame one be one because of how we've done it. It's now what you see is it's coming up the same direction. It feels more like the health is going up. I want the frame number to be equal to the health, and that's why I inverted the value when we animated it. So 100 is equal to 100 health, and zero is equal to zero health. So that's why I did that. Now we want to go ahead and add a material. Uh, we're going to call this H for health so we can find it. And we want to make it shadeless. And then we want to go ahead and animate the color. All right. So we're going to hover over. The, uh, sorry, we're going to change this to a green. And we're going to hit I. And then we want to go to frame zero and change this to a nice red. And then hit I. And what you'll see now is as it animates, it goes from red to green. Now, if the health was getting minus, it would go from green to red. In the middle, if you like, you can add another keyframe as well and just change the color to something you'd like if, you, if it's not quite working for you. So there we go. There is your color and your animation going up. So we want this to work in game. So we're going to go ahead and change this from default view to game logic. Um, now... You could do it in the normal view, but game logic is just nice and simple. All right, so we also want to come down and change this to texture mode. Ooh. So one thing to note is that we can't use this uh, in an overlay scene the way it's happening. So we're going to have to parent this to a camera because we can't copy a variable using the property actuator. We can't copy a variable from another scene as far as I know. I've tried to fix it, but it is not working. So we're just gonna have to have this parented to the camera. Um, and we're also gonna call this bar. So it's gonna have to be parented to the camera and it's, so we can't have it in another scene, which is a little bit annoying, but we can't work around it. So I'm adding two animation actuators here and with, now you see we have these two ones which the computer has created. Then we, you see we called our material H and we've got H animation which it created, it created two actions for us. And also you see we have our key one here. And what we has gone ahead and done for that as well is it's created a key animation as it calls it. 
So if we connect those up and we press play by hitting P on the keyboard, nothing's happening. And the reason for that is we did not add our frame count. So if we go ahead and start the game, we can also start it from up here. Ooh, or hit P. Um, nothing's happening and that's the reason is because we didn't put it in for both of them. So now if we press play, you can see it's playing the animation but it's only playing one of them. So why is it doing this? You see here we have these two layer options. You just don't, you can't have the same animation, two different animations on the same layer. So the way you fix this is we just go ahead and change the layer to a different layer that hasn't been used. So we're going to change this to one since it's not been used by any animations. And what you see is if we press play, it is running the animation. There we go it's working now so it's running both of them at the same time so we want this to run off a property so if this property is equal to 50 we want the animation to be on frame 50 so the way we're, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to change this to a property type the property type for the action um the action actuator sorry and we just selected the property h which we selected over there now we can change this to frame something like 50 and we can press P and there we go it's playing the game we can change this to whatever you like and as you can see it the the animation is going to be the same and it's going to play it's going to have different different parts of the animation so the way this is actually working is this frame count is that this this variable is saying to the actuator what frame it should be on so this this is this is very useful. Um, but one problem we have is if this is not going to be on your player, this is not going to be your player. So you want to copy this from your player. So we're going to go ahead and do that in a second. Um, one thing to note is I'm going to quickly kind of just move this into the position you want it to be in. Um, so just move it up and really really close to the camera. And then let's go back to camera view. Scale this down until we get it in a nice position. Uh, then we want to go ahead and parent this. So if we press play by hitting P, uh, we parent it a little bit later, I guess. Let's go 40. So yeah, so it's working. And there we go. So we want to copy this from a player, I believe. That's what we're going to do next. So yeah, yeah it's working. It's all done. So let's go add a cube. This is going to be our player that we're going to copy our variable from. So we're going to add an integer and this is going to be player. Player. Oh, it's not here to spell player. Player. Um, H for health. And then we're going to go ahead and we want to copy what this is equal to. Um, the reason we're copying it to what it's equal to is because we want this variable, this health bar to be equal to what the player player's health is so we can go ahead and move this up add a message and this is basically just going to update it whenever the player gets hurt this message actuator so what you see I'll, we've gone ahead and just taken out the other always and we have added this property so now what we can do is we can go ahead and copy from the object player or we can just use this color picker and select the object we'd like to copy from. And once we click that, it will ungray out this area and we can select player H. And there we go. Uh, so now we can't really see too much. That's because we need to add a message in here as well. So this is going to be player hit. And we, our player needs to send a message. So let's say they clicked with something, we'd send this message. But for now, we're just going to use a if they press space it's going to send a message so we could just play a hit in here just write the same message exactly the same no uh, all caps or no caps just exactly the same caps or no caps you have it's got to be exactly the same because blender is cap sensitive uh, so we can't see this so the way we can do this is we can just go ahead and and in just a second after changes, we can go ahead and select this information box and show debug properties. Now this is going to allow us to see it in the corner. As you can see, H is equal to 20 when we hit space, so it is working. Um, now, 
I did get this wrong when I was when I was recording this. You don't need to do this step right here. Uh, I was just getting the property actuated, and when that was run, I was going to run these animations. You don't need to go. You don't need to do that. And in a second, you will see that I just delete that and hook it up to the message actuator. So you don't need that. Uh, everything should work fine. If we just go ahead and delete this, what you'll see is it works perfectly. We have nothing to worry about. We copy it exactly. The only problem with this technique is it does have to be on the same scene. It can't be an overlay scene. But that's not too big of a deal. We can work around that. If you do know how to use this copy property actuator thing through another scene, I would love to know because it, that would be really useful. But now you can see we can just change a place health or they could hit something. We could change it using that way. And it changes up in the top. So there we go. If it's too much, it will just be where the last frame was that it could be. So you don't need to worry about, worry about that too much. But... There we go, a health bar, easy, simple to do. You can make it look nicer if you liked. This is just a basic version to show you what you can do. So if you want to see more tutorials like this, you can subscribe because we'll come out with a new tutorial every single week. Have a great week, keep blendering, and if you have any questions about this tutorial, comment them down below. Have a great week, and keep blendering.